Howdy guys, it's Joe here, and I'm here to tell you the 5 best carry heroes in my own opinion in Overwatch Season 2. Now, personally, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch in Season 2. I've almost got myself all the way up to Diamond, and I feel like I have a generally good knowledge of what's been going down in Season 2. So hopefully I can tell you guys some of the best carry heroes, and some of the heroes you should be playing if you want to carry yourself, be it in solo or duo queue. Now, of course, if you have a full team, this list won't apply completely, as well as if you're in solo or duo. But the majority of players statistically are in solo or duo, so this list should be helping you quite a bit. And with that said, let's go on to this. And of course, this is talking about when you're on the offense, and in the future, I will make a video on this for defensive heroes. So, there we go. Anyways, let's get going. So, also before we begin, this list is really in no particular order. Number one really isn't that much better than number five, and vice versa. You can kind of flip these people around. So, I do want to put that out there before we really start. And of course, there are different roles, so you can't really, you know, compare everything completely the same. But, there we go. Anyways, let's get right onto this. So the first person that I say is probably a really good carry hero still is actually Genji. Now, Genji did get a lot of nerfs in the previous patch. Genji's not as good as he was in Season 1, but he still is decent, and he actually does quite well against a lot of the team comps out right now. In particular, he's doing very, very well against Mercies, and Mercies are actually being played a lot more often, so I feel like that's pretty nice. You can take those guys out, and as always, you do still have a decent amount of burst, you still do have a decent amount of poke, and you do still have that really good ultimate. Sure, it's two seconds less of amount of time but if you're comboing with a lot of the other combo people be it Reinhardt or Zarya you can still get a lot of people on the enemy team kill them take out the back line at least and get two to three kills with your ultimate which is really just gonna make you win the game so so I will say Genji definitely deserves a spot on this list he is a little bit less consistent than some of the other people but he still is a very good choice if you want to carry yourself now to a pick that I don't really feel like a lot of people would talk about I'm gonna say a support now, most people, you know, they just kind of ignore the supports. They say supports really can't carry, but this support in particular, I feel like, can actually do really well. And my friend, personally, has been doing amazing with the support. And I've been seeing this guy do a lot of good all over the place. And, of course, that support is Zenyatta, as you see on the screen. Zenyatta is just a support that can, A, do a lot of damage. You can kill people. You can actually take out people that are trying to kill the other supports on your team. For example, if you see a really good tracer, you know, running around, if you turn around, EM, get a headshot, and melee that tracer, well, you kill him. If you just play Zenyatta really well... You can get a lot of kills, get a lot of damage, and stop people that are trying to kill you. You can also do decent against Genji and Tracer and really a lot of people that try to go for the back line, which is nice. It helps you carry your back line. As well with that, of course, you do have probably some of the best healing in the game. Of course, by that, I mean you don't have the highest healing per second, but you don't have to be near the person you're healing, and you don't really have to be looking at them way too often either. You just have to simply put it on them, go to whatever you want to do, do damage, and then look at them a few seconds later. You really just have really easy and really consistent healing. As well with that, your ultimate counter is most ult in the game. A lot of the times when you're playing in competitive, you know, your team will just group up at the wrong times. The enemy team will have a Farah and a Zarya ult going on. And if you are happening to be playing this character, if you're playing Zenyatta, you can pop your own ult. You can stop the enemies from using their ults. Or not really stop them from using their ults, but more stop the damage from their ults. And of course, just make your team not die. Just carry your team that way. You have a lot of stuff that you can do with Zenyatta. And I feel like personally, as far as the supports go, he's probably one of the best that you can learn if you want to be able to do very, very well in your games and carry yourself, especially on offense. So, to my next pick, I decided to go for Reaper, and Reaper's been a character that I feel like has been, you know, about average for the longest time, and then in one of the most recent patches, you know, the Season 2 patch, a lot of people got nerfed just a little bit, you know, a few patches ago, McCree was nerfed a little bit, a few patches ago, you know, Genji was nerfed, I guess, this patch, actually, and, you know, it kind of let Reaper be played a little bit more, so I feel like in the state he's in right now, you can actually pick him decently well. He's a really nice flanker, he can get around, and at the same time, he does very well against Zarya, very well against Roadhog, and pretty well against Winston, actually great against Winston, and those are the tanks that I'm seeing a lot, at least for the majority of games you see at least one of those guys. He's just a very nice pick against this tank meta because you know there's pretty much always two tanks, two supports, two attack dealers, and having one character that can deal with even both the tanks by himself, it's nice, it can make your team have a lot more DPS, and of course we cannot forget, you know, sneaking around, killing the enemy supports, that's amazing. Finally, you just can't forget that ultimate. If you combo this ultimate with a Reinhardt ultimate, with any ultimate, or if you even just have an Ana to boost you in, really anything, even a freaking Lucio that ease you in, your ultimate can do work on the enemy team. You can take out at least three to five people, completely destroy the enemy team. Of course, it is hard to know when to go for this ultimate, but if you do know when to go for it, and if you can get it at the right times, you can completely demolish the enemy team and just keep your team on the winning side. So, Zarya is a hero that I feel like has been very strong for quite a while. She really hasn't been top tier for the longest time, but as you know, some other tanks have been nerfed, buffed, and has the meta has kind of changed up a little bit. I feel like Zarya has been in a very good spot right now, and especially if you're playing in solo or duo queue. 
Now, if you have a full team of six versus another full team of six, Zarya can, you know, do pretty well. Can be quite a good carry hero. But if you're playing in solo queue, she can do freaking amazing comparatively to a lot of the other tanks. Because, you know, your E mainly and, of course, your damage output as a tank. With your E, it's just so nice. Let's say that you have a Tracer going after your supports. E that support and it kind of counters the Tracer. As well, if the enemy team has a Roadhog at all, they grab someone on your team, you E them, it completely protects your teammate. And as well with all of this, if the enemy team has a Reinhardt and they go for their ultimate, you can shift yourself, E someone else, completely stop that damage, completely stop all that CC. You have a lot of counterplay with your kit. And yeah, it's, it's just really nice. You can counter the enemy team a lot, which is just super good in solo queue as countering the enemy team really lets your team do a lot better. As well with that, of course, you have a very high damage output for a tank. You can really just go right through people, which is just nice. It's really not way too hard to think about. Having a high damage output is just good when you want to carry your team. And, of course, we cannot forget about the ultimate. Probably one of the best ultimates in the entire game. If not the best, I don't know exactly. It's, it's one of the best for sure, though. This ultimate combos with most other ultimates in the game. You can have a Tracer, you can have a Genji, you can have a Reaper, you can have a Reinhardt. You can have most heroes. And if you get three to four people in your ultimate, you're going to be freaking balling on the enemy team and just take them out. Now, of course, it does take a while to charge. But at the same time, with all your damage and with, of course, shielding your teammates and all this other stuff, it's it's worth it it's worth the wait and it's just such a strong ability and really it isn't way too long to charge considering how much damage that you should be doing to the enemy team overall though i feel like this harrison does have what it takes to be one of the best carry tanks in the game of course you do probably want her with another tank she's more of an off tank but if you can't happen to pick zarya if that is a good situation for you i'd go for it now finally i'd say probably the best guy to learn is really going to be mccree now mccree's been a character that has been really good ever since beta now he hasn't always been the top of the top tier like lucio where you pretty much always have to pick or ban him but he's always been playable to top tier he's, he's been in between there the whole time and he's been a really good character to just learn and he's been a very consistent character and as well with that he does a lot of damage he has a lot of persistency his accuracy is pretty much perfect and of course he has a lot of burst he has a lot of everything really and he just does well in the majority of situations and he can really carry in the majority of situations Especially on offense, if you see the enemy team, you can counter a lot of characters. If you see a Junkrat, shoot that guy, kill him. If you see a Farah, kill him. If you see a Mercy, kill him. A lot of the backline you can take out easily. You can take out Tracer pretty easily as well with that. You can take out Genji decently easily enough. You could do really well versus the majority of the cast. And you also have a lot of outplay potential. You have your E to outplay people. You can right click, left click, try to get the headshots. You can try to shift out of the way of certain abilities. You have a lot of stuff that you can do as this character. Now, probably one of the things I'd say really isn't the best about him is his ultimate because it's not really as consistent as a lot of these other people's ultimates. You know, Reaper's always as good. Zarya's always as good. This ultimate is, you know, pretty good depending on the situation. You can get a complete team wipe. You can be OP like that. But a lot of the times you're just going to be using it to try to scare away the enemy team or get one or maybe two kills for the max. Sometimes you will get that team wipe, but most of the time you won't really be doing it. It will put you in a bad situation a lot of the time. People will see you. It'll be easily kill you. But I'd say that's probably the only part about him that really isn't that great and really isn't the most consistent thing. Other than that, he's really good. If you get really good at your accuracy, if you get really good at your headshots, if you get really good at, you know, just getting damage, positioning yourself, getting behind shields, knowing where to be and when to be there, this guy's probably going to be one of the best guys you can go for. He has just some of the highest DPS, highest consistent damage, and he'll be able to carry a lot of games for you if you do bother to learn him. Now, I will say that he is probably one of the harder characters to learn to play. He's definitely one of the hardest characters to play as far as if you're going for all those headshots. But again, if you can learn it, if you can put in the time, definitely worth your time and effort. And if you can't put in all that time, I'd say Soldier's probably a good second pick for this. He doesn't take nearly as much practice to get really decent as, you know, McCree, to play him really well, it takes a lot of time. To play Soldier super well, it takes a lot of time, but it doesn't take too much time to play, you know, Soldier decently. So I'd say Soldier, he's a decent pick. He's still really good at carrying, but if you can learn McCree, definitely recommend it. And it's been one thing that I've been trying to use a lot, and I've been able to climb quite a bit with this in the current season. Anyways, of course, that's just all my own opinion. These are the characters that I personally feel like are the easiest to carry with, and of course, in Season 2 of Overwatch Competitive. But if you have your own experiences, please tell me in the comment section down below and tell me who you feel like should have been on this list. I could not have the experience of everybody in the game. Of course, maybe you've been playing with a lot of fars that always carry. You could say that. It really depends on your own experiences, but for as far as myself, these feel like the most consistent and probably some of the best heroes that you can pick to carry, for at least for what I've experienced. Anyways, thank you guys as always for watching. Tell me that down below, you know, in your own experiences, and tell me how you guys have been carrying yourself up through the rankings. Of course, as always, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, press the subscribe button for more videos like this, and tell me if you like any more top fives in the future. I feel like I can do these decently well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and of course, as always, have a wonderful day.